Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another stock market frenzy here. So, in this video, I'm going to be covering SP 500, some of the must have tickers, the big seven, and a couple of positions in my portfolio as well. So, first up, we have the SP 500. Uh, RSI looks like it's curling up. That downtrend has just re reversed because of that China incentivizing uh, their citizens to buy stocks. And I think that really brought in a lot of uh, volume into the market. And once uh, S&P 500 hits 460, we're going to have to see if that double top is going to reject that uh, up upside there. So uh, once again, stock price is in a bullish divergence with the MACD. And you know you know what that means uh, if you're on my channel here. Uh, so uh, that typically means bullish. Uh, so next up, we have the 4-hour chart for the uh, S&P 500. RSI looks like it's overbought and the MACD is also, uh, uh, you know, uh, complementing that, although it's, you know, pretty high right now. It is a little bit decaying here, but I think uh, the market looks bullish once again. I know I said this uh, one or two days ago as well, but we just crossed that 200 MA on the four hour chart, which I think we were looking at. Uh, it you know rejected here the last time it tried here and you know second time second time's a charm I guess, um, and right now I don't think we are going to have a, a you know a very strong bearish correction here. I think what's going to happen is that we'll probably maybe bounce up here and uh, probably go to four sixty. Don't follow that line. It's just what I think. Uh, and yeah, if that happens, then we'll see if. The S and P five hundred is going to you know hit that double top and reject that, or we are going to break out of that four sixty chart, uh, which would be extremely extremely bullish. Uh, a lot of people are expecting only four seventy, uh, so that might actually be a bad sign. If we hit that before December, it is possible we might not be able to get a Santa Claus rally, but uh, we'll we'll see we'll see. Um, I'm not trying to predict anything, but just what I think. Uh, next up we have uh Dixie here or DXY. And we have this chart pattern where uh, it is uh, curling towards that downside. And yeah, RSI looks like it's curling up here. Um, this is pretty weird. Uh, I, I think what we are seeing right now is that both the S&P 500 and the DXY is um, moving in the same direction. And I think that's possible if, you know, China incentivized uh, people to buy stocks and and people you know buy dollar as well just to buy stocks or something. Uh, I'm not sure if that's economically correct. I, I you know I, I don't necessarily have the experience. Hopefully someone else knows better than that. But that's just what it looks like right now. But you know overall, uh, Dixie is still on the downtrend here on the one week, so it is still coming down. And uh, typically we see a, um, you know. We saw a green candle change to a red here on a uh, resistance. So that would typically signal a downtrend here. We saw the same thing as here when it had a uptrend. So same thing here when it had a downtrend and downtrend, right? So that is, uh, I think, very obvious if you if you look at it that way. Um, now, obviously, can I be wrong? Yes, but uh, it looks like to me right now, the Dixie is going to curl down and the stock market is going to curl up. So, you know, that's a good sign for people who, who is who are invested, right? So next up, we have Apple stock. Uh, RSI looks like it's about to curl up, and you know RSI is o almost over uh, overbought here. Uh, once again, we have a possible double top here at around one ninety six, and you know MACD is complementing the RSI. We are both in a bullish trend again, so uh, this would be a bottom here at one seventy three. Uh, so yeah, that's Apple looks bullish once again. Uh, let's see here. Amazon, uh, looks like we are still in the, uh, small uptrend, not necessarily super bearish, but, uh, as you all know, Amazon did not sell off, um, recently. So, you know, it's pretty hard for investors to buy when it's, uh, uh, it didn't have a sell off, right? So we're not seeing much volatility with Amazon, but it seems to be holding this, uh, trend here and you know if that uh let's see if that interest rate doesn't affect amazon i i think you know um i guess it's gonna be a good thing uh if that makes sense uh let's see here for our chart 
our side looks like it's cutting down and MACD it looks like it's also cutting down i would say though amazon doesn't look necessarily as bullish as apple here uh but it doesn't necessarily look bearish as well so amazon's hot I, I think i said the same thing yesterday i think we're gonna wait for more data here uh next up we have google uh rsi looks like it's cutting down uh it's nearing that overbought territory and macd is also complementing that but uh yeah we are not seeing any sales here so we are still in an uptrend uh typically we'll see a, a you know stronger sell-off here at the end of the macd here and you know we are not seeing that so google still looks bullish to me uh for now i i think this is a looks like to looks to be a 52 week peak right i think so so you know that doesn't necessarily spark a a downtrend in the mark in the uh, google stock here but yeah it is probably a 52 week high here uh next up we have meta uh one of the stocks i don't really cover here uh let's go to the one week chart here and once again that downtrend has already reversed here uh we are still in a bullish divergence with the macd on the one week chart and let's see here a uh, four hour chart uh yeah I, I don't think this looks very good i i think that rsi is about to cross here uh we are seeing a little bit more sell pressure in meta here so yeah that is just one thing that's why i don't really cover meta much i i guess i i don't have a uh serious understanding of meta's technicals but yeah uh, next up we have microsoft um bullish divergence you already know what that means let's go to the four hour chart here and we are not seeing a, any sell pressure so microsoft looks good here um you know usually that macd uh decaying here would signal a downtrend in the price but right now we are still probably in an uptrend here so um you know microsoft looks good as well well as of 5 50 a.m um new york time things can change down the road so uh let's move on to nvidia nvidia is the one was the one to spark this uptrend here so um most of the stocks that are in the uptrend are following nvidia including the s&p 500 uh rsi is overbought right now um, so that typically would not be a good sign to buy here but uh a lot of people are still super bullish on nvidia personally i would pick asml um, instead of nvidia but that's just, that's just me and um you know some people pick smci and other stocks as well i don't um uh, I, I wouldn't say that is a bad choice either um so right now nvidia uh doesn't look like it's selling off here once again this is pre-market and things can change during intraday but it also does look strong um i don't necessarily see any uh you know supports here you know it's still trying to find either a support or resistance here so that is going to be either more upside or more downside here uh zooming in a little bit further you can see that the macd is in the red and the stock is selling off a little bit but it isn't a lot so that is a strong position for nvidia and i think a lot of the other stocks as well so next up we have tesla the last one out of the big seven which i did sell out of um because um you know i'm a i'm a, I'm a p word okay uh for tesla um so nick uh, you know stock price is in a divergence with the uh, macd for our chart uh we are bouncing off that 200 ma here so um you know this actually doesn't look super good but it is possible if today is a bullish day tesla might some might find enough volume to push it up above that i'm not actually sure why it's not able to go up um i might be because of that vin fast competition uh yeah that could be a very possible um thing here uh so vin fast is a car company from uh is it vietnam yeah vietnam uh and you know people have very high hopes for it and it is possible some people in the tesla community are tr buying uh vinfast or selling their tesla shocks stocks for vinfast i'm not exactly sure but it seems like tesla doesn't have the volume to break out of um this uh 200 ma here which is a bad thing if we curl back down now it is possible we find a, a second chance to cross here uh maybe we need to find another bottom here it is possible that the bottom could be uh 242 here um so we'll see if tesla gets back there uh 
you know, it, that, that would require it to move against the big seven and the uh, S&P 500, which is a tall order to ask. But that's just why I'm seeing it with Tesla, right? So uh, I think that comes, concludes the end of the S&P 500 and the big seven. Uh, if you guys are not interested in my portfolio, then you can, uh, I will suggest you guys leave as well. Uh, I'm not actually sure why I want to go through here. Let's go through CanView. Can view, uh, no, that's speculative. Um, let's go through ASML. Uh, once again, ASML looks like it's in a, I would say convergence. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a bullish divergence and, uh, it is going to take more time than Nvidia to, uh, I, I, I think get volume here. And, uh, let's see here. Uh, they have earnings in 48 days, so that's another seven weeks, right? I I didn't do well in math. And yeah, we're going to have to wait for that. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any sell pressure right now? Doesn't look like it. I think it's very similar to the rest of the big seven here. Um, I, I think that MA is tangled right now. We are going to have to wait for a, a more... Uh, you know, either upwards or, or downwards direction move here. Uh, so yeah, that is ASML. Let's go to PayPal next. Uh, let's see here. PayPal is in an uptrend right now. Uh, the four hour RSI is at oversold right now. So that is a little bit concerning. If people are actually bullish on PayPal, um, which, you know, they, they will know it. Uh, well, we'll know it in the next couple of days here. So um, this is the one week chart here. Uh, looks like it's about to curl up to that green MACD. We're going to have to see how well it does when it actually crosses there. If it breaks out here, then we will likely see 72, I think. Or at, at least 70 um, in the next week. So... Yeah, you know, the stock market looks very good right now. Um, I, I always have to ask the question when everything is so obviously bullish that, you know, if this is a trap here. Um, and I don't think so. I don't think this is a trap. Uh, I, I think, you know, I, I think maybe the, the volume has come back here and we should either stay flat or buy out all the way um, in September and we will get 10 October. Uh, well, I, I, I heard some things about October. Um, you know, there were two crashes, huge major crashes that happened in October. So I'm not trying to be a fartster, but that could happen. I, I, I would not put it out of the question if you're looking at the markets. Overall, it's so blown up right now. Um, bad things could happen in October, which, uh, yeah. So if anyone is still watching, um, mark your calendars for that. Um, on the one week chart here, we have the RSI. Looks like it's about to curl up. Uh, and MACD uh, is decaying towards their upside. So it looks like we are finding some sort of support with Enphase as well. Um, red MACD, not exactly too much selling. It's still in a downwards direction, but we did see a engulfing candle here. So that would typically signal an uptrend, but, uh, you know, this is end phase and people, well, investors don't necessarily like the stock. So lastly, we have solar edge here. Um, let's go to the one week chart, uh, solar edge RSI, um, bottoming out here at 30, uh, well, 30 on exact here, 30.03, uh, MACD is decaying towards that upside here. So we are seeing a pinkish MACD. So we are seeing some sort of buy volume here. Um, I, I say on technical recap, if uh, Solar Edge can trade between this two support levels, that would be good. But we are not sure if that's going to happen. Don't follow that. Uh, let's see. For our chart right now, uh, RSI looks like it's midpoint. Wow, very exactly midpoint here. Um, so we, we literally have no idea where the direction is on solar edge. Um, yeah, we're going to have to look at more news on energy and solar. I think energy right now is pretty low. And the fact that the interest rates are so high means that there are less home buyers. And when that happens, there is typically less solar, uh, solar, you know, people installing solar on their homes. And that's why 
and face and soleil which are down so badly so with that being said thank you guys for watching um have a nice one out there stay safe on the markets we look very bullish right now but this could be a trap i just want to say that on the uh, the you know the end of the video and one more thing i did borrow two thousand dollars to a friend so i you know what i told him was that um he has four weeks to uh repay me uh no wait four months to repay me so you know he's currently in the army right now and uh i, I don't necessarily trust him but hopefully i did the right thing there you know two thousand dollars is still a lot of money to me despite me being a trader I have to use money to make money and i am giving up that opportunity to help him which i haven't talked to him in like five six years and he wasn't necessarily a very good friend of mine he was just a, an acquaintance but i i hope that i did the right thing there and you know uh, no good deed comes unpunished but you know we'll see and as always guys like and subscribe